Am auzit un termen interesant ieri la o conferință și uitați. <laughs> Mi l-am notat. Am fost rugat de câțiva oameni din audiență, nu mai știu dacă sunt sau nu aici. Sunt? So the guys who asked me to present in English, are they still here? Da, ah, ok. Am fost rugat de câțiva domni care stau în audiență și nu știu româna, dacă este în regulă să prezinte în engleză. Eu n-am niciun fel de problemă. Este cineva care are o problemă dacă prezinte în engleză? Ok. So just for the sake of diversity and inclusion, <laughs> yeah, we will speak in English just to make sure that everybody understands what I'm saying and the message that I want to deliver to the audience. Uh, okay, so uh, hello everybody. I want to thank you very much for coming here to see my presentation, to hear a little bit about what's for us in the future, <laughs> uh, from the digitalization perspective. My name is Doru Rista, I'm the country manager of Lenovo Romania. I'm leading a, a nice team of people who are very active in all uh, customer segments, meaning consumer, small and medium business, enterprise. So uh, I'm here to meet as much customers as possible and to see how can we uh, come and meet your challenges and to solve at least part of these challenges that you're having with your businesses. <clears throat> and when I thought about what to discuss about today, um, I just remember that somebody told me, I think it was also in IT Congress, uh, you know what? All of you, you are coming here and you're saying that you're number one. <laughs> Who is the second? Of course, each of us in the IT industry vendors, the vendors from the IT industry, we have a certain place where we are number one, but we are second, third, and fourth, maybe fifth in some cases. Uh, I will still tell you that we are number one in a very important market, <laughs> but not now. So I thought what would be interesting for you, and uh, actually our goal, and the goal of the Lenovo sales team, sales teams, is uh, of course to try to find out what are your challenges, what do you need in order to improve your performance, your team perform team's performances, your uh, business profitability, your competitiveness and so on. So um, I looked to some, to some studies that we have in Lenovo and I thought that uh, one important topic and very critical, let's say, these days, is the future of work uh, from the digitalization perspective. And uh, if we look to the current uh, background that we are living in, there were a lot of changes lately, of course, due to pandemic. So, and I was telling you about a conference that I've attended yesterday. I heard for the first time the term perma crisa which comes from permanent crisis, yeah? So uh, we tend to think now that we are in a permanent crisis. Uh, this can be seen as a positive term or a negative. It depends how we look. But what I want to try today is to find together a way to look and to uh, somehow approach this kind of term, permacrisis, because this is not necessarily a bad term. The thing is that one thing which this pandemic uh, taught us is that uh, we have to build a business resiliency in order to overcome any kind of disruptive events like pandemic or anything bad which can happen. And I can give you the example of Lenovo. For example, when we, when the crisis started, when the pandemic crisis started, for us it was flawless to go home and work from home. 
because we had a huge technology behind. The only thing that our IT guys had to do was to enlarge the VPN capability. That was all. But everything worked just perfect. So this means being resilient in these kind of times. But I know customers, and probably some of you, you had issues in adapting, adapting your workforce from an IT perspective, adapting your work. And uh, coming back to what we learned is that the way we're working is changing or changed, yeah, and it's still changing. Because everybody said, okay, this is the new normal, we will work from home or hybrid, or it's still not finished, as you can see. People are coming back, but people still, they need that, that kind of flexibility, yeah? So then, you, as customers, as uh, decision makers for your companies, and us, as the ones who are providing you the needed technology to digitalize your, your businesses, have to look to this kind of stuff. First of all, <laughs> I would like to start with this quote because I like to, to put some quotes which uh, are giving the message, the main message of, of, of my presentation. So, and I found this quote which I find very, very nice. William Gibson is an American Canadian uh, writer, science fiction writer. He's the inventor of Johnny Mnemonic character. And he said the future is already here, it's just not evenly, evenly distributed yet. So this is what we're talking about. Um, we see a lot of stressors that we have to address, you and us. The stressors for you are the same stressors for any company. We see that employee expectations are rising. We see a different, uh, 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 a different approach, yeah? Uh, smaller ta group of talents, everybody is fighting to get these talents into the, their companies, but then they have to overcome these challenges. Uh, new employees, they are asking for uh, newest technology, they are asking for mobility, they are asking for uh, flexibility in choosing the, the PC, for example, that they are using, or the laptop, or the phone. This is the new normal, and we should adapt in order to attract these talents, otherwise they will go to the companies who are offering these kind of things. Pace of technology is incredibly fast. Budget challenges, we will speak later about it. It's a challenge for you, but for us as well, when talking to our customers. And of course, one thing is, uh, is uh, also the, the external stressors, which is the financial uncertainty, the supply chain disruption, which affected all of us in the last year. And we know very well, we had very long delivery terms. Now we came back to normal, but actually it was a disruption between the supply capacity worldwide, not necessarily for Lenovo, but for the whole market, and the demand, which increased exponentially due to the, the high demand of, of uh, moving to work from home. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. So, what are the challenges? One of the challenges which is very important and very uh, important to be addressed by you and by us as well as, as your suppliers, as your vendors of IT technology, is the data overload. I was reading an article who was making a study uh, about the um, rising of the data each day, which is incredible, which is huge, which needs uh, a lot of uh, storage capacity more and more storage capacity, but it's actually the problem is not the storage capacity, is what do we do with that data? And it seems that we are not using that data in a qualitative form, but maybe 15% of it. The rest of 85 is just not addressed, is there, but it should be addressed, it should be analyzed. For this, we need technology. And of course, Lenovo is one of the companies who can give you that technology, who can offer you that technology. The remote workforce is one of the main challenges that you probably faced and you are still facing. Yeah, there are companies who are trying to bring the, the employees to, to the office back, but some of the employees there are saying, okay, if you are forcing me to come back to the office, then I'll leave. I'll go to, the, to another company. So then you have to be to adapt. 
In, for example, at Lenovo, we have a research and development center in Bucharest. It's one of the biggest research and development worldwide centers of uh, Lenovo. And uh, the director of the, of the center, I was talking to him and he was saying, you know what, I just have to find a way because I'm trying to, to bring the software engineers back, but they don't want and they, some of them told me that they, they will leave. So it's hard for me to find other people. That is crazy, is creating a gap. So I have to be flexible. So we have to be flexible, but if they are working from home, they need a proper way to work from home. They need the proper security. They need the proper management. They need the proper mobility. They need the proper bandwidth. And we have to think about that. And we are offering this to you. <clears throat> This is what I wanted to show. So if we're speaking and if we're looking from a, from, a, from a user perspective, basically we have an ecosystem in which we have the clients and we have the solutions and data center who's hosting the applications and everything which is related to, to the digitalization behind our businesses. So if one thing is that uh, Lenovo, as a, as a company who's, who's the leader in the PC industry, uh, we understood that even if PC is not a critical thing, it became critical in the last years. Why? Because uh, it has a psychological impact at the user level. So, and I can give you an example. There was a customer who, some years ago, they asked for a certain tablet which was a consumer tablet. And we, we are not, we, we probably we are the only, I mean, not probably for sure, Lenovo is the only company who's addressing all customer segments in the same active way and proactive way. Consumer, SMB, commercial. We're competing with some brands in consumer, we're competing with other brands in commercial. Yeah, and the enterprise. Um, and we're trying to sell business solutions for businesses, for enterprise, we're, and we're selling consumer solutions for, consumer, uh, for consumers, yeah? for home users. And it's a big difference between these two. I like to say that a consumer product is made for one who's giving the money for it, for it from his own pocket, while a business product is a product who's offered to somebody who's not paying for it, who's working for a company, who's getting the the PC, yeah? So then you have to, to take this into consideration. When you pay for a product, you will be much careful with it. When you don't pay, you can drop it sometimes if you want to change. <laughs> so uh, it has a very big psychological impact. And this customer, they asked us for a consumer product. And we said, you know, it's a totally different approach. It's a totally different uh, uh, service channel. And so I said, no, 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 it's okay. Give us, give it to us. We tested it. We want it. And uh, ETA, <laughs> because we made the sale through ETA, they said, no, no, let's sell. Okay. And we sold, by, I think there were like 10 units. And you know what? They had problems with them. And the IT manager came and he said, you know, Lenovo sucks. And I won't buy any server, any PC, anything about Lenovo anymore because of those bloody tablets. Yeah. <laughs> so. Of course, in the end, we solved the problem and everybody was happy. But uh, what we learned from this is that the PC has a very big psychological impact. And this can turn into a snowball, yeah? And it can create a huge effect. And some of you who are IT leaders, you know very well this. And you know what means for a guy to call, my PC is not working. Well, maybe it's not plugged. Did you check? <clears throat> so, what they want? They want touch screen. Everybody wants touch screen now. I, so I don't have touch screen. I'm a little bit behind. I'm a little bit of an old school. But um, I, have cust uh, I have colleagues who come and they put their finger on my screen. <laughs> they realize that I don't have touch screen. Uh, they want mobility, flexibility, uh, resilient connection everywhere. I have a connection on this laptop constantly because I have a 4G module in it and it's working non-stop. So if I don't have a wireless, then it's anyhow connected. 
And then, of course, there is the AI which is coming, artificial intelligence, because the guys from, uh, from the Romanian television was asking me if I will speak about AI. Who's not speaking about AI today? Everybody's speaking about AI. If some years ago the, 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 the word, the modern word was cloud, now the word, the most important words are artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is actually on our tables. It's embedded in our computers. It's embedded in our laptops. If somebody is behind me and the laptop sees the person, it will close. So this is artificial intelligence. Uh, and virtual reality, augmented reality, it's also the new thing. And more and more businesses are starting to require this we have these solutions and we have professional solutions for this. So the trends that we have to look at, the places, the workplaces are transforming from, or the concept of workplaces transforming from devices to spaces. We have to make spaces in our office. We have to have collaboration spaces. We have to have huddle rooms. We are not in a fixed office anymore. Probably many of you, like we have in Lenovo, shared desks. You just book your desk for tomorrow or for the whole week, and you come in and you stay there. Maybe the, whole, the next week you're working from home, somebody else will book that desk. This is cost efficiency. This means then competitivity, profitability for our companies. Then from computer to computing. And when I'm saying this, and we will see, uh, we'll speak a, a little bit about it more. Everything is starting to, to transform from a simple machine to a whole solution. Even a simple laptop, it's a whole solution because it has security on it, it has software, a lot of applications, and uh, it's actually connected to a whole ecosystem of, of, of solutions and applications and everything you want. <clears throat> from traditional IT to digital industries. I don't think that it's, it, there is somebody in this room who's not digitalized or who's not working in a digitalized world because you don't exist if you're not digitalized. You just cannot be competitive. You just cannot sell your products. Or you can try, but probably you will not stay long in the market. From human to planet, I think this year the, the world is starting to understand that our uh, life here on this planet is limited. It's not forever. And I was uh, reading a very interesting thing. I read a book written by Yuval Harari. If you know him, he's an Israeli historian. And the book is called uh, History or Simple History of Humanity, something like this. Very interesting, but something just you know shocked me at the end of the book <laughs> when the guy says, Everything that humankind is doing, everything that we're trying to achieve, everything that we're developing and we're inventing is for one thing, immortality. Humans, they want to become immortal. This is the goal of human, of humankind. And probably, if we look to some science fiction movies, maybe we're not so far. And if we see this trend of technology, technology and digitalization was completely exponential, I think we're close to, to this uh, type of, or a certain type of immortality. <clears throat> so what do we need to do? We have to be resilient, we have to adapt, we have to build trusted partnerships inside and outside, and more and more we have to be careful about ESG. By the way, I have two smart clocks here, Lenovo smart clocks. And I, would, I was supposed to tell you at the beginning, just to make you be focused on the presentation, that I will ask two questions at the, the end. And who responds first will take the smart clock. It's a very nice gadget, which has a Google Home installed on it. It's nice, I tested it. You can speak to it. By the way, speaking about artificial intelligence. You can tell it, play some music or, you know, play some radio and he's giving you uh, different alternatives that you can choose from. Nice gadget. Okay, ESG. 
Does anybody know what ESG means? Environment, social responsibility, and corporate governance. Two years ago, it was the first customer who asked us, what do you do about environment at Lenovo? How, what actions, what, what approach do you have? And I said, why are you asking me this? Because we want to start to make a kind of a supplier scoring. And we are a very green company. We're thinking about protecting the planet and the environment and so on. So we want to make sure that we're working with the proper suppliers, which are respecting the same values from this perspective. And then I started to search. And I found that actually we have the so-called uh, ESG report, which is published on our uh, website. And it's actually huge. And it, I was astonished to, to find a lot of ISOs, you know, the ISO uh, uh, certifications, and a lot of targets uh, about reducing the carbon footprint. And it, I was astonished. And these targets have to be actually certified by specialized industry uh, uh, companies, you know, institutions, which, because if you are not certified, then okay, you can say, like Lenovo said, you know, by 2050, we want to be zero, net zero emissions. What does this mean? It doesn't mean that you, uh, you do not produce carbon footprint, then, but you compensate everything that you are, you are uh, producing. Yeah? So ESG is the new thing, and everybody will have to be aligned. We'll speak about it a little bit. AI is already here. It's already here in this room and it's listening to us, and it's processing the data, and then it will tell us if it was okay or not. Okay. By 2025, more than 50% of enterprise management data will be created and processed outside data center or cloud. This means edge computing. This is one of the Lenovo main focus right now, edge computing. If we speak about smart cities, then we speak about edge computing. If you want to make a city smart, you need edge computing. You, have, you can look to, we have a business case on our website, uh, success story, more success stories. You can find also some success stories from Romania, uh, software defined solution with uh, Electrica. We, you can find the uh, um, high performance computing uh, solution that we installed at UBB University in Cluj. You can find also a, a software-defined storage installed in uh, Strauss, Romania, and some other cases. But there is one very interesting, Barcelona. Barcelona is Barcelona City Hall is partnering with Lenovo to create a smart city. And the solution is based on edge computing. OT and IT means operational technology, which has to be put together with information technologies in the future in order to get our businesses at the competitiveness and pro uh, profitability level to, to, to make it resilient in the market. <clears throat> By 2025, if we speak about edge computing, and now the, the, the word is latency, we look at latency, by 2025 we'll not look anymore at latency, we'll look at bandwidth cost. That will be the most important thing. <laughs> Machine learning, it's also something which is happening and um, it's basically related to artificial intelligence. That's the core of artificial intelligence and this is where we want to be, yeah? To make machines learn what they need to do for humankind. <clears throat> so, it depends on you where you want to be. You just choose and we can come and offer you the solutions. But I suppose that it depends on the risk that you are uh, willing to take. It depends on tech laggards. I was looking, uh, actually I didn't know what laggards mean. Means unchat in Romanian. Slow. And as said, 
decarbonization and digital is the new thing that every, everybody, including everybody who's in this room, has to take into consideration in order to be in the place we all want to be, at the top of our industries. And digital resiliency. Yesterday at this conference, there were some CEOs from different uh, corporate and Romanian companies, and uh, there was an agreement between all of them that what we learned from this pandemic is that we need to have a resilient business. I'm repeating this. That was the most important thing. <clears throat> Okay, so above the whole infrastructure, we, we have to use the intelligence, our intelligence, but also artificial intelligence. What are the challenges that we need to address? I will name just a couple. I mean, security is not a new challenge. It's a constant challenge for all, all of us. Uh, tight budgets, it's a very critical challenge right now. And it depends how we look at it. If we just want to be laggards, then we will just put the smallest budgets for the digitalization. I think it's a wrong decision. <coughs> Low resources. This, this is one of the most issues which can be addressed with digitalization. <coughs> and business sustain sustainability it's more, more, and more present. And it will be a must in the next years. Probably you will hear more and more about business sustainability. And what does the reality recommend? I didn't want to put here Lenovo, what does Lenovo recommend? But what is reality forcing us to do in order to increase, to grow our businesses, and to make them even uh, more profitable? So. Just a kind recommendation also from my side. Please ask before doing the budget. Um, I saw some companies who are doing the budgets by looking to the online websites, yeah? I won't name the certain website that everybody's looking at. It has four letters. It's one of our partners as well. Um, and I can tell you from our experience, we have, and everybody has some stocks now, because uh, it's obvious that the supply increased and the demand decreased. I mean, it's the vice versa what happened two years ago when we had supply here and demand here. Now it's a little bit the, 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 the other way. So everybody has stocks. Everybody is investing a hell of a money in these stocks just to get rid of them. And if you go to, a web, to this website or to other websites and you see a certain Lenovo product, that price is a very special one, believe me. It's uh, just one time price. So if you do the budget and you, if you have the project in, after six months, you won't get that price anymore. It's just a one-time deal, so be careful. Ask, ask us, ask everybody who's in the industry, just to make sure that you're budgeting your, your projects correctly. Of course, ask us when designing solutions, when sizing your IT solutions. <clears throat> and please take into account services. I had a customer a couple of years ago who asked me, you know what, I don't, I think it was also with data, the visit there, and he told us, yeah, but you know what, I have a problem with you, why? Because you're not offering me services. I want you to come and to install the computer, to do everything for me. And there was a guy from Meta who said, yeah, well, actually we offered you, but you said that you want to pay me 300 euros for a laptop. So how can I offer you services? Because I cannot even offer you a laptop in 300 euros. So there is no money for it. If you want services, we would be more than happy to offer them. And you will see, we have a lot of services. But you have to budget them. Disposal, it's also a thing which probably, it's a challenge for many of you. We have a, a service which is called Asset Recovery Services. You have all the stuff, give it to us. No matter the brand, no matter how old it is. We'll take it and we will give you the certificate of disposal data wiping everything which needs to be done. Why should be Lenovo the, your partner of trust? Because we are a very innovative company. Lenovo is a global company, and Lenovo has one of the biggest assets in the IT world. If you think about one of the most vibrant brands 
in the PC world, it's ThinkPad. ThinkPad is actually the, the proof of innovation in the, in the PC world. Yeah? And then we have Lenovo bought in 2015 x86 technology from IBM. So we have the whole portfolio of data center. Infrastructure Solution Group, Intelligent Devices Group, and Software and Solutions Device, uh, Services and Solutions Group. This is how we approach the market with these three groups. These two, they have the, the hardware that we can put on in your, uh, in your uh, companies. And then software and solutions, personalized tailored solutions uh, and services which can come above. <clears throat> this is the company, uh, this is just a few things about Lenovo, 82,000 people, 180 markets, a global company with presence uh, all around the world. We're very proud that one of the, the third actually biggest research and development center of Lenovo is in Bucharest. Um, some of the well-known, one of them is Yokohama, where the ThinkPad was invented. You know, they were the first ones who actually designed the format of the ThinkPad, which is like a bento box, the lunch Japanese box. This is how ThinkPad started in terms of design. Uh, and uh, in Riley, North Carolina, we have the um, Motorola um, headquarter and also the Infrastructure Solutions Group headquarter, the Data Center Solutions. <clears throat> and very important thing for you and for us as well, we have a factory in Budapest where we build desktops, workstations, servers, and uh, clusters, software-defined clusters. So this means fast delivery, a couple of days, one week. These are the thing brands. ThinkBook, ThinkPad, ThinkStation, ThinkCenter, ThinkEdge, ThinkVision, ThinkReality, ThinkPhone. This is a ThinkPhone, by the way, you know. Uh, it's the first business companion launched by Lenovo. It's a phone which is addressing the business community and it can connect with a ThinkPad. It can mirror everything which is on it. You can use it actually like a small PC. <clears throat> and this is a, a thing we are proud of. Worldwide, in the, in the PC uh, um, market, we have 23%. So 23% of the, all the PCs sold in the world are Lenovo. In Romania, we're also proud to show you the yearly results. So we have 23.3%, which is more or less aligned with the worldwide. Of course, this takes a huge effort, but this comes also because of the quality of our products. This is the main thing that is helping us to be there. <clears throat> I put here separately from the intelligent devices group, we have since uh, three years, we launched this uh, group of products, smart collaboration, which are designed with Teams, Zoom, and uh, Google Meet to help you collaborate with your, custom, with your customers and partners and employees remotely. By the way, everything which, is, which I'm showing here can be tested. Just let us know. We have also a booth downstairs. We have some colleagues. You can leave your business cards. You can test these products if you want. And this is uh, uh, our portfolio of uh, data center solutions. So starting from uh, Think Systems, which are the rackable uh, blades, uh, high density, uh, high performance computing clusters and servers to edge, com edge uh, computing and uh, software defined. And in order to make these solutions, we're having a huge group of technological partners that we're working with. One thing which I wanted to mention here, Lenovo is the fastest growing company in terms of high performance computing solutions installed in the world. <clears throat> ThinkShield is our security concept. ThinkShield is on every business hardware solution that you're buying and that Lenovo is offering, that you're buying from Lenovo and that Lenovo is offering in the market. And ThinkShield means a shield of security built around the hardware, which means not only software, but also the hardware things. Like for example, Lenovo is the first company who put the mechanical um, uh, shutter for the camera. 
which was adopted then by the by the by the other uh, players in the in the market. So it means physical security, data security, user security, hardware security, software security, and also internet navigation security. <clears throat> and you have here a matrix of what's embedded in it. And I was telling you about services. So don't waste your time with installing images, with, uh, I don't know, repairing broken uh, PCs which uh, were broken by the user and they, are not, they cannot be repaired by warranty. Or you can extend the warranty, you can buy accidental damage protection just to repair a broken display also on warranty. Uh, you can buy any kind of services you are thinking of and any kind of services you need internally for your internal customers, yeah. including what I was saying, asset recovery services. There is also DAS, the, the, the solution that we're offering also in Romania, device as a service. If you have a small company, if you don't have resources in, in IT, just come to us. We're working with our partners to implement these kind of solutions. <clears throat> and a lot of factory designed services like installing an image from factory, like um, uh, custom BIOS, like um, uh, personalized images, personalized uh, uh, drop in the box solutions. You want to put, I don't know, some welcome kit in the box, we can put it from the factory. And we also have from the factory Microsoft Autopilot. So the systems are already registered in your Intune console from the factory. You don't have to. I mean, when you start it, it immediately recognizes that it's in the, the business network. And I was telling you, Lenovo is the first company who's offering you the possibility to offset the carbon footprint of, of our products. So when you buy a PC or a server or a display, a monitor, you can also pay a small amount, which means offsetting the carbon footprint, which is measured exactly and certified by these international companies. They showed me two minutes. So uh, these are a few of the things that Lenovo is doing to be as green as possible, from changing the materials, from using, uh, to using uh, recycled packaging, recycled materials. And the last thing that I wanted to, and I put it here, there is, a, Lenovo made a study, it's, it's called the, 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 the Think Report, which is done uh, yearly. And uh, what we found out was that we don't have time to think about what we need to think about. So we have sometimes to think about what we need to think about. Yeah, and a lot of managers said that they are too, too tired and they are too overloaded by tasks that they cannot take any, any more, you know, uh, um, how is it in English, it's, it's uh, lucid or, uh, you know, qualitative decisions, yeah? Qualitative decisions. So we can help you to release your time in order to think about what you need to think about. Okay. This was my last slide. So I'm in time. I have two questions. Adela, do you want to put the questions? <laughs> Robert, Lucien? I'm just asking you because I don't know what to ask. <laughs> OK, please. OK.
Yeah, so we have a sales force who can also help you as financial advisors, yeah? Because we have both models, you know, the CAPEX and the OPEX model. Device as a service is an OPEX model. So it depends on your needs, and we can come with a solution even from a financial point of view. So yes, the answer is yes. We can advise you directly, but it depends. I mean, we anyhow have to put partners in between. And ETA is one of the, our most important partners. Thank you for the question, and I'll give you the watch for this. And I'm waiting for another question. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, you choose. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Relația dintre Motorola și Lenovo este că Motorola este o companie a lui Lenovo. Este un brand al lui Lenovo. Deci, practic, Lenovo a cumpărat Motorola Mobile de la Google în 2014, ceea ce înseamnă în jur de 5.000 de patente care sunt înglobate în telefoanele Motorola produse de Lenovo. Au fost scoase cu brandul Lenovo o perioadă, după care Lenovo și-a dat seama că brandul Motorola e unul mult mai puternic și cu rezonanță mult mai mare pe piață decât... Strict divizia de telefoane mobile. <laughs> so, CO2 offset. You pay a small amount of money, those money are not going to Lenovo. You know how many tons of CO2 a laptop, for example, is producing, depending on a model or a monitor. It's measured, and this, this measurement is certified. And by paying this small amount of money, the money are going into green projects. 